Gnome is Gnome and KDE is KDE. In a perfect world, every single application a user needs is going to be available in the GUI toolkit of their desktop. Everything integrates really nicely and there's nothing to worry about. No theming issues, nothing like that. That's not the world we live in though. It is very common to need to run a Qt app under GNOME. The most obvious examples being Caden Live and OBS. And the same in reverse, a GTK app on Qt. No great examples come to mind except for GIMP, but I'm sure they do exist. So the question is, how should Qt and KDE app theming be handled under another desktop? And exactly this question was being posited on the KDE Visual Design Group issue tracker. Theming of KDE apps on other Linux DEs, e.g. GNOME. But it's not just GNOME people here. There are some budgie developers, there are obviously KDE developers, and a bunch of other people here all trying to work out how this should be done. Now, to understand what should be done, we need to have a technical understanding of how Qt and KD app theming actually works and what problems even exist in the first place. Luckily, there is this really good write-up by Nicholas Feller. I'm not going to read it word for word. If you want to go and read the entire thing, I highly recommend you go and do so. But I'm going to go and summarize the important parts just so we can have an understanding of what's going on. So, starting off simple, ignoring all of the extra KDE nonsense, just focusing on QT by itself. There are three main components to styling. The first one being the QT platform theme. Now, theme doesn't mean what you would traditionally think of the word theme to be. It's not like, you know, the font you're using, the colors you're using, all of that stuff. The platform theme is more about how the application feels on a certain platform. It is your font settings, your click intervals, whether a certain operation is a single click or a double click operation, which system dialogues to be using, what the platform color palette should be, and all of this stuff makes sense if we are talking about Windows and macOS. If you say, this is macOS, and what does a macOS application look like? There is a defined set of parameters to define what that is going to be. You know what a macOS system dialogue is going to look like. You know what colors that macOS typically uses. And the same is exactly true over on Windows as well. The same is not true on Linux. There are desktops that have certain fields, such as KDE, such as GNOME. But then what about window managers and all of this other stuff out there that is completely different? So to address this, Qt doesn't basically address it. What they do is have a generic GNOME theme and a Plasma theme. And then there are out of tree plugins for things like QGNOME Platform, Qt5CT, and a bunch of others. The second aspect is the Q style. This is what you typically think of when you are thinking of a QT theme. This is the style of the widget in the application. Things like Breeze, Oxygen, Add way to QT, and all of the other QT themes out there that you might want to be using. Whenever something needs to be rendered, the styling is deferred to that Q style. But as can be seen from applications like OBS, applications can choose to overwrite the system style and use something completely custom. And the third component is the Q palette. This defines the color palette used to draw the applications, typically defined within the platform theme. However, it isn't set in stone. Applications can choose to override this, and certain setups like Qt5CT or Plasma can allow the user to manually control and override those colors and set them however they want. Now, technically, there is a fourth component if we're talking about an application made with QML, the Q markup language, a declarative language for making Qt interfaces. These 
don't use the Q style, instead doing their own styling with something called the QT Quick Controls 2 style. And having this styling is very important because in the case of QT5 applications, um, if it wasn't set, they would be very broken. Nowadays though, with QT6 and onwards, these default to Fusion. Now, the reason why we did QT first is KDE uses what QT does, but also makes some additions on top of it. And to understand these additions, we need that baseline understanding. One such addition is the K color scheme. This serves the same function as the Q palette and can be treated basically as a superset. It pretty much provides more finer grain control over the colors. Rather than having so many things grouped together, a lot of these things are going to be split out to allow for more individual color control. But unlike Q color palette, it is generally not defined by the platform theme, with the exception of KDE because they actually made the K color scheme. And when it is undefined, rather than just remaining undefined and things completely breaking, instead it defaults to an interpretation of the Breeze color palette. And exactly this can cause a really big problem with theming. So if you're using a KDE app under GNOME, you're going to probably have the Q GNOME platform. And this is going to set the Q palette. It is not going to set the K color scheme. So right now, you basically have two color palettes available to the application. If everything it does is pulled directly from Q palette, no problem whatsoever. But if the application decides it's going to use some K color scheme colors, well, now you're effectively using two color palettes at the exact same time, and some applications will completely break with this, and certain elements just cannot be seen properly. And this is especially an issue if you're using a dark theme, because now you're mixing a dark theme with Breeze, a light theme. What do you think is going to happen with some of those elements? Good luck finding them. Now, I am very well aware of the fact that you can make KDE apps play nicely under GNOME. This is not the question here. You can do all of this extra stuff, install these extra themes, install these extra applications, and make them work like they should be. That's not what is being discussed here. What is being discussed is how do we just make it work out of the box with no extra intervention from the user. Now, the author doesn't exactly have a perfect solution, with the exception of just basically getting rid of K color scheme. One option is QGNOME platform and these other platform themes could define a K color scheme. In the case of QGNOME platform, this would be using add waiter like colors. And in that case, the problem would pretty much go away but it only works on platforms that are using QGNOME platform or other platform themes that are defining the K color scheme. If you are not using that, the problem is pretty much just still there. Others could absolutely implement it, but outside of GNOME, you still have the problem of what theming, what color palette are we actually supposed to be using? And the second option is if no K color scheme is present, programmatically define the key color scheme based on the current Q palette. As I established earlier, the K color scheme is a superset of the Q palette. It may not be perfect in all instances, but it should be at least more consistent than using Breeze and a completely different color palette. The problem though is apps that are using the K color scheme, because it is a superset, it has more fine grain control and more individual things are going to have different colors. So it would lose that fine grain control that the K color scheme would previously offer, but it wasn't working outside of KDE in the first place, so it's not exactly that much of a drawback. Now it's not completely broken, it's just a little broken. But there's also the matter of those pesky QML applications. Even in the case of KDE, the desktop that uses QT, 
it doesn't actually have a perfect solution to make this work. Even their solution is basically a hack. Pretty much what it does is fetches the QT quick control style from the Q style and heavily relies on applying colors using the K color scheme. So this is basically causing all of the same problems as the other applications, but in this case, the problem seems to be a bit more pronounced. Luckily, it pretty much has the exact same set of solutions. Just define a color scheme or programmatically make one and then use a similar hack to make sure the QT quick control style is actually being set to what you need it to be set to. But separate from all of this technical discussion is also the cultural discussion. Who should be theming your apps? Should it be the user? Should it be the platform? Should it be the developer of the application? Should you have a dartboard that has random colors on it and then you get some drunk guy to throw darts at random colors? Katie and Gnome have very different outlooks on how this should be done. Gnome is a waiter. This is non-negotiable. It gives a very consistent look. Yes, the user can go and theme things if they really want to, but it's assumed by every developer that you are using AdWaiter, and if you are not using AdWaiter, basically you're doing it wrong. And if your application breaks because of your theme, that's generally not a problem of the developer, it's a problem of you and your theme. Whilst over on the KDE side, while they do use Breeze as a fallback, it's much more open about what themes are being used. Developers are not restricted to Breeze, but it's a good idea to make your application work properly with it, but also a lot of the other popular themes as well. Things like Sweet, Arc, Papyrus, Materia, and let alone all of the other big distros that apply their own different tweaks as well. But there is also an issue with icons as well. Another topic are icons. KDE applications make full use of Breeze icons, and unfortunately, we got a lot of reports that KDE apps running on other desktop environments are missing icons, making the app often unusable. K icon theme installs a fallback to Breeze when an icon is missing, but I think it is only installed on Plasma. The problems with Breeze icons on other Ds have apparently gotten bad enough that Budgie blacklists it. Ah. Uh, which is a problem. And there's a bunch of other issues being discussed in this issue tracker as well, but most of it hasn't really achieved any sort of end result. It's a lot of discussion over the technical stuff we've already gone over. There's a lot of discussion about the cultural issues about how theming should be done. And I'm very curious to see how this turns out going further into the future. I don't particularly care about, you know, theming being consistent. You've seen my desktop. I just have it mostly sort of maybe consistent, enough where it doesn't bother me. But I get why you want to have something that, you know, you have all your GNOME maps, they look like they should. You bring in something from QT and it fits into your desktop as well. It makes sense. I just don't care. And I hope that some sort of solution is met and, you know, sometime in the future, things just look like they belong where they are being run. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about KDE apps? What do you think about GTK apps? Do you care about things being consistent or does it just really not bother you? I would love to know. And if you like this video, uh, go like the video if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here check out the patreon scribe silly bear pay linked in the description down below that's gonna be it for me and i should go finish mr robot